Hello, uh, I am TJ Mercier. Um, I work on Android, and I want to turn on MemCGs for Android, and I quickly ran into a problem when I tried to do that. So this talk is about uh, one of those problems and brainstorming uh, ways we can address it with uh, Yosri and Chris here, uh, who uh, work for Prod Kernel and have the same problem elsewhere. So, yes. Uh, yeah, so what's the problem? Zombie MemCGs. Um, scenario here, uh, you have a MemCG with some processes in it. It allocates some anonymous memory. It gets charged for that anonymous memory. Memory.current's correct. You know, the world is happy. Um, same C group allocates some shared memory. Gets charged, well, so, uh, memory that can be shared. It can be a lot of different things. It could be shemem. Um, still gets charged for that memory. Everything's still fine. Uh, and then that memory actually is shared with another C group. The problem here is that only one of the C groups gets charged for the memory. It's the original owner of the memory. There's only one owner of a page. So memcga gets charged for it. memcgb gets to use the memory, but it doesn't get charged for it. It's kind of weird. You got a uh, shared memory, one owner. Um, and then ye, all the processes in memcga dies, uh, die, the memcg gets offlined. Uh, the memcg does not go away. The memcg stays around. Uh, it stays around because the pages, uh, the, the shared memory that's still in use by B is still charged to memcga. That's, that's the, uh, the main problem. Okay. So, yeah, the issue with that is that they can accumulate. They can accumulate a lot, um, thousands of memcgs. Uh, I ran into this an hour after I turned it on the first time on Android. Um, and there are similar issues in prod kernel where these guys work. And so, yeah, that consumes kernel memory. That's, that's not great. Um, we're just wasting kernel memory trying to track memory to C groups that don't exist anymore. And and it, yeah, it makes any kernel operation that uh, iterates across memcgs uh, less efficient and reclaims a big one of those, right? So, um, yeah, we iterate through all of those every reclaim event. So, uh, yeah, here's some things that we thought, you know, we could do to address the problem. Uh, yeah, first is manually reclaim, proactive reclaim the C group that's that's about to be offline. Well, that doesn't really work if the memory is not reclaimable. Uh, so that C group will stay around until that memory does become reclaimable. Um, if you try and reclaim uh, from the C group before it's offline and it results in the pages being swapped out, that makes it worse, actually, because, uh, you know, that that C group will stay around until the swap gets swapped back in, and who knows when that's gonna happen. And uh, yeah, the other issue is you can only attempt to, to do that once before you offline the C group, and, and, and it, can, it can fail, so uh, it might not capture everything the first time you do it. Okay, so that, that's, that's not a great solution. Um, another thing we can try to do is, is reparent the charge, so you know, the C, group, C groups is a hierarchy, right? So why don't we just move the, move the charge up to the, to the parent? and uh, completely get rid of the, 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 the originally owning C group. Well, that's also kind of weird too, right? Like the, the parent doesn't have any more claim to the memory than the child does. So uh, in terms of like correctly accounting who gets charged for what memory, that's still not ideal. Um, and then, yeah, then, then it affects the LRU vec of the, of the parent too, right? So you're mixing pages. Um, zombie pages with non-zombie pages, and then you have to scan more pages in the parent. Again, reclaim is no, you know, regress is there. And, you know, that can happen multiple times. That reparenting can happen multiple times. So that it can happen all the way up to the root C group, and it just gets worse and worse every time that happens. So uh, not a great situation. Uh, yeah, the other issue with this is the same workload can result in different uh, different uh, memory charges. 
Um, so you run the same workload twice in two different C groups because of the non-deterministic way the memory gets charged. The actual uh, <laughs> page counter uh, is not the same each, each run. Okay. So I, th I think the fundamental issue is that uh, you know, st struct page only can reference one memcg owner when in fact the page can be referenced by sort of arbitrarily many owners. Um, yeah, so the memcg data field of struct page or struct folio has that info. And yeah, th so the, the fundamental issue is any time a page is shared between C groups, any reason, um, the, the charge on the C group can outlive the owning C group. So this, that's what keeps the zombies alive. Um, right. So, okay, so yeah, been brainstorming some, some ways to address this with uh, Chris and Yosri. Uh, one idea is instead of reparenting the charge, just moving the charge up the hierarchy, move it to some other C group that has a valid claim to the memory. Um, in terms of accounting correctly, that's a little bit better, but which other C group? That's kind of hard to find. The first one that accesses it after the its current C group becomes a zombie. We will get exactly to that. Okay. Comes later. <laughs> Actually, yeah, uh, I'll just, yeah, okay. Um, and then and a longer term idea where, um, you know, instead of uh, associating a page with just one memcg, um, a way to associate a page with multiple memcgs. So that's, that's sort of the, the idea under the longer term solution here. Actually, yeah, okay, so I guess yeah, you can take over for, uh, uh, yeah, hey everyone. I will try to speed through these so that we can have room for discussion at the end. So, uh, as TJ said, one idea is to recharge the memory after a memcg has gone offline. So basically we try to go through all the pages that are charged to a memcg after it's offline and we try to recharge those to the rightful owners of the memory. So just to enumerate the types of memory we can have charged to the memcg, uh, we can have kernel pages. Uh, these Why focus so much on the offlining of the memcg? Well, isn't this problem kind of originating when the VMA was unmapped, like the shared VMA became unmapped? As, as long as the memcg is still alive, the pages are charged to it. Well, the, I know, but yeah. I'm saying, like, if you're going to do recharging, why don't you do the recharging when the VMA that was shared, that was the one that originally parented it to the memcg, becomes unmapped? That's like the logical point when that memcg no longer has a claim on those pages. It doesn't have to be a VMA or doesn't have, there doesn't have to be a mapping. It could be just page cache pages. Ugh. <laughs> well, but if they're not mapped into your process, then you still, it kind of. Th <laughs> <laughs> Shared files is right? Exactly, right? <laughs> yeah, and also there are resources that do not belong to anybody, like uh, TMPFS that is sitting around even without any process having that mapped or even open. TMPFS, TMPFS. Shman, page cache. Yeah, so, yeah, so enumerating the types of memory we may run into, we may have kernel pages. These are fine, they're currently being reparented. We don't have to worry about these for now. Uh, we may have LRU pages. I like to divide them into mapped and unmapped pages. Uh, for unmapped pages, they may be page cache pages, like you said, file pages, shmim, all that, and they may be anonymous pages in the swap cache. I will deliberately ignore this case for now because these are not very common and they shouldn't, they're, they're not actually shared. They're not an artifact of the same problem. They only happen if we just swapped out or just swapped in the page and they should go away when the process dies, so I will ignore these for now. So assuming this covers everything, uh, we go into what can we do about those pages? I like to define this as a toolkit, things we can do. So the m simplest and most aggressive thing you can do is just affect the pages, right? For page cache, this is really nice. You just write back the pages, you uncharge them, and then next time someone uh, tries to access them, you refold them, you, re you reallocate, you recharge. So it's very simple, just reclaim, but it is uh, intrusive, basically, because if it's hot memory, then you incur a fault for uh, next time someone accesses it. Also for swap back pages, if you try to swap out a page from an offline MCG, 
you basically reparent it. The swap gets charged to the parent, and when it's refaulted, the charge goes to the parent. So that's effectively delayed reparenting. And if the pages are pinned, you can't uh, evict them to begin with. The second thing you can do is to recharge to someone mapping the page. So assuming the page is mapped, then you can walk the R map, find a process mapping it, find their MemCG, and then try to charge it there. There's an obvious problem, of course. Uh, well, the benefit is that this is a rightful owner because they're mapping the page, they're using the page, so you can give them to the page. The obvious problem is that at the random point in time, a MemCG gets charged for memory that it may have used three hours ago, right? And then, in the worst case scenario, you can even cause an unkill there. So this is disruptive. You do not uh, you do not evict the page, so there's no page fault latency on the next axis, but you may hurt the MemCG. And also, if, if the page is mapped by multiple MemCGs, you, you need to make a choice which where to charge it. Uh, so that's a little bit complicated. The third thing you can do, which is uh, close to what Matthew uh, suggested, is what well, I like to call two-step recharging. Basically, if the page is not mapped, you, you don't have a way of finding out who is currently using the memory, but you can flag the page. And the next time someone accesses the memory, you can give the pages to them. So uh, the reason I call it two-step is that to have the zombies disappear at once, one thing we can do is just uncharge from the zombie itself, leave it charged at the parent, and then flag the page. And next time it is accessed, we move the charge. Recharging to the parent should be straightforward. The parent is already charged through the hierarchy. So you just basically drop the reference to the zombie MCG so that it, it dies as, as soon as possible. So this is complicated because there is work that needs to be done on the access path. Like the other two you can do asynchronously, but this one, you, there is actually work you need to do when someone is reading or writing or mapping memory. So uh, a proposed workflow would be as follows. Uh, basically, when a MCG is offline, you can queue an offline an, an asynchronous worker which basically iterates the LRUs and does the following. If a page is unmapped and it's filed back, you can argue, like the current reclaim heuristics argue that for fi file pages that are not mapped, they're not very important. So we can make an argument to evict those pages. It doesn't have to be this way. This is just a proposed workflow. If the page is swap backed, we can do what I just called deferred recharging, where we basically just mark the pages so that the next time they're accessed, we can recharge them to the process accessing them. This, this is applicable for mem pages. Uh, and then if the page is mapped, we can either walk the R map at once and do the disruptive recharge that may result in an unkill, or we may do a similar thing where we just flag the page and next time it's mapped or accessed, we do the recharge then so that it's more deterministic when the recharge happens. Of course, the problem is that if the page is mapped and you wanna uh, recharge to the next axis, you have to do something like NUMA faults where you protect the mapping and the next time you access it, there's a page fault and, and then you recharge then. So it's, uh, and then there's the other problem is that if a C group dies and it had some memory already swapped, this, these swapped pages will keep, uh, ref will keep uh, references to the offline MCG indefinitely until they're swapped back in and, and they will be recharged at the full time. So this is a tangential problem, but it's also related. It also causes zombie MCGs, but this can be addressed completely separately by just having an offline key fit that will just asynchronously loop through those and, and, and recharge them separately. But I'll, I, I'd like to focus more on, more on the recharging part of it. So this is the idea of the short-term solution, I guess. Uh, any questions before we move on? Yeah. We used to recharge in the past. It was a problem. We had to drop that. We built uh, quite a lot of assumptions that MMCG doesn't change over life. And th this will be hard. So um, I think that one part of the problem is that uh, sharing resources across some cross bo uh, resource boundaries like C groups is not a great idea in the first place. So are there ways to avoid that in the first place? And also another problem is that uh, yeah, offlining of um, uh, C groups is uh, probably just too easy to be doing without very good reasons. Like uh, we have seen cases where um, services are restarted. They are using essentially the same environment, yet their C group is just removed just to be created at the very same place. Yeah, so a part of the working status in, in the data 
MemCG, well, new one has been created. So maybe we just want to make it harder to remove those. Um, would a lot of things break if we just refuse to remove that uh, MemCG if there is a memory that cannot be just uh, easily dropped? That would be one idea, just to avoid the problem, rather than to trying to fix something that is really hard to fix. Because, um, yeah, there are resources that are n not reclaimable without data corruption, like uh, TempFS or uh, probably many more. Like, uh, you can have um, file descriptor sends over, and that is so memory bound to a file descriptor that is still open. And, yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, can I comment? Uh, I don't know if you guys can hear me. So, so, so yes, we can. To, uh, okay. So previously, like we used to have recharging, but we have uh, like it was actual like uncharged and charge. I think with the reparenting, which is different, that can still be done. Which uh, I, I think the whole infrastructure we have uh, by Roman edit. Uh, that's one. Second, uh, the the shared like node sharing between C group. I, I think. That is kind of in today's economy, like kind of not really possible. Everyone is trying to save memory by potentially sharing more, uh, like, uh, more like memory, uh, reducing the cost. So we, we do need, uh, yeah. So rather than like, okay, avoiding the problem, uh, I would say we can uh, actually aim to have like what we can achieve, like, uh, like the solution easily in the short term. That's beneficial. What, just to comment one more, uh, like a user is here with the like with the mapped memory. We can actually like uh, I think you already mentioned uh, like a, the recharging, uh, like a, something like a like a autonomous fold, or you can unmap all those pages and whoever the next first fold. Uh, gets uh, that uh, is there. So my, I think here we kind of have to decide what, uh, like, okay, short term, this is, I think, achievable, is good enough, or do we want to like, go further? That's all. Yeah, exactly like Jekyll said. It was it was actually brought up to have like a syscontrol or config that will just prevent people from removing memcgs if they have memory charts. But sometimes it's not something that you can control. For example, if you have shared libraries and there are page cache pages that are hot and being actively used, or if, worse, if you have like a temfs file and you don't have swap, and you happen to be the first person to write something into that temfs, there's no way for you to get rid of it today. You're stuck with it virtually forever until someone decides to delete. Like if you have a lock file, for example, in TemFS, and you write just one byte to it, and then no one deletes that lock file, then you're stuck with this charge virtually forever, right? You, the offline MCG will stay there. There's no way to remove it unless you truncate the TemFS file. So I, I do agree it would be nice if we could have some separation and we could prevent sharing as much as we can. But like multiple people have noticed over the, on the mailing list over the, I don't know, last year or something, there a lot of people run into this. It's not. Uh, it's not a, a problem that we can really tell user space, stop doing X and it will be solved, unless everyone loads their own copy of their libraries and everyone does their own logging. And like Shaquille said, this is not very efficient. So, Yeah, I do understand that reasoning. Uh, the, question, the main question is whether uh, we want to see that something has, is uh, not really working well or we want to hide that. So right now we just hide that because uh, those MCGs are offline and it's not really easy to find they actually exist and that they might there might be a, because essentially that's a resource leak, right? Because uh, somebody just uh, forgotten uh, a uh, file, lock file, whatever that is, is a resource leak. That's a memory consumed on behalf of somebody. So either we just face it and just consider that to be everybody's fault, <laughs> like the root mem MCG owner, uh, or you can drop the owner of that thing and hope that somebody will touch it again and get caught and get charged for that, but uh, then you are hiding uh, that there is a resource consumption in the first place. So I, I this, this problem is there for ages, and I don't think that we have found something that wouldn't be breaking something else, and uh, I, I don't think that there is a, <laughs> an easy way out of that, and 
that's why I'm saying that maybe we should just refuse to removing that C group and at least you can have an admin looking, okay, so this is something that I cannot really remove, so that's probably a sticky memory somewhere and maybe I need to do a, you know, that imperative uh, kind of um, uh, action that I just remove that file because I know what I'm doing. I, I don't know, I, I simply do not see a solution out of that. Uh, it's just how honest are we can be about that problem and how visible we will make it because. But, but just visibility is not, like in, in, I could give an example now for our like workload environments, if people fail to remove the MemCGs because some pages are charged to them, they're just going to schedule new jobs and create new MemCGs and then at some point they will hit the limit for the number of MemCGs on the machine. They won't be able to schedule any more jobs and the fact that we didn't allow them to delete the MemCGs is not going to make them they're gonna come to us and say, okay, I'm, not, I'm deleting, this is not getting deleted. I don't know which file in the system or which, what is exactly pinning it because I don't know exactly what it accesses in its lifetime. And we're, we're gonna ask them to, I don't know, crash the machine so that we can find out what the pages are charged to them and, and tell them what to do next time. It's, it's, it's hard to... Yeah, right, but those leaking resources are staying behind. So uh, even if you do not have any hard stop eventually, then you just, OOM the, the whole machine and panic anyway because uh, you've got those unreclaimable resources eating up that memory. So uh, there is simply no way out of that without some intervention. I mean, just, just a little bit of brainstorming, but it seems like you need a parent for a shared thing and maybe one exists or maybe you need to create a new one. So that, that's a vague statement, but if you've got several processes and they're all sharing memory and they some of them might die you can either create an artificial parent or you can use an existing parent which you don't like or you can nominate a parent from among the ones that are sharing it but that's the essence of your problem is that right now it's a sibling society and that's no good <laughs> you've got to have something that owns the memory oh yeah that is a long-term solution I no, let's move on. yeah which is exactly what, what I'm gonna give the mic to Chris now because he's gonna talk about exactly that yeah, we're, it's a very good segue to our next slide, which is, uh, which is like, uh, what if we do the brave thing and try to model the uh, shared memory usage, and then what kind of solution we can come up with, and can what kind of problem we are going to run into? Uh, I have this idea only for a short period of time, and then it's still something in development. Some of this not fully hashed out. But uh, the basic idea is that we want to assign an owner for the share resource, and then uh, it will remove the asymmetric portion of it. Uh, the owner, the basically those share memory, the LIU, and will point to that uh, share memory SMCG owner, and then the share resource they will have the same lifetime as this owner, so it won't have like. Uh, this process go away, but this uh, shared memory is still lingering around. And we also potentially can track the shared resource, their uh, shared usage by a borrow counter, and but that's fairly complicated. I will get into that in the last part of the slide. And, but we will take care of some easy case first. And then the advantage of using this model is that there will be no charge movement, like the charge is always charged to the share uh, resource, the share MCG. And if we model it correctly, we have account for all the share resource potentially can be used by these uh, other MCGs. And then there will be no zombies. Basically, there will not be uh, any zombie left. Uh, and then this is a simpler case. What if we we don't check the detailed usage of the uh, how much partial use. We basically only say that uh, uh, a shared resource it's either belong to uh, MCG or doesn't belong to MCG. It's a member. It's basically it's a it's a set of a member or not. The big change is that it changed the memory instead of it as a one counter. It changed that into a list of counters. And then for the shared resource, you have the option to say, hey, I'm member D, 
digital resource should be considered for this MCG's uh, memory pressure. And then you will see that this big uh, flat line pointing to it is the case B, and the similar uh, memory offline case, the, the, the MCG offline case. The A, basically, they first had touched that, but they don't get, uh, they don't get charged for it. Uh, this actually have a very c common case in Google. They do the user space packet routing, and the, the, the MCG that does the packet route to other MCG to process them, the B is, A is the one that doing the switching, and B is the one that actually doing the processing. A is very quickly done, and then B will probably hold the packet for a longer time processing it. And this is the actual right result we want to get. Basically, B get memory pressure when they're holding this packet for too long, but doesn't like releasing it. And, and then the, the user will have the option to assign which, uh, uh, which uh, MCG will include this shared memory or not. And keep in mind that their parents parent and will need to do the de duplications. Basically, if this share object is already in the list, they will need to only include that once. But because the share resource is a relatively few different type, so it should be a very short list to, to maintain uh, the, de the duplications. And then I will get to the last really scary part and what if we want to track the actual usage portion of it and I haven't figured out like a really good scalable way to do it there. Stephanie, you can do it like basically we use the uh, borrow counter kind of concept. There's still one guy owns it and then other people, any reference, uh, any map consider as a borrow usage and then you can char, kind of consider that portion of the usage as part of the uh, memory pressure. Uh, using the same architecture, but it requires a per MCG, a per share MCG and a MCG tuple counter to keep track of it. And then the set gets more complicated when they merge in the parent if the share resource have different sets and then <laughs> merge into the parent. So it's a very complicated problem. But uh, for Google's usage case and the first one, like the membership is good enough to, to take care of it. Okay, thank you.